So I am here now to introduce to you Ted Lumpert. Ted is a good friend to pre-K to third grade in our state. He serves as the president of Children Now, a national research and advocacy organization based in Oakland. He's also a lecturer at where? UC Berkeley. <laughs> but. But he did go to Stanford. <laughs> Uh, he was founding mem the founder of and CEO of EdVoice, a California education reform organization, and he was a California State Assemblyman for eight years, which brings he brings so much knowledge from that experience to the political realm. Uh, he served as, in that role, chair of the Assembly Higher Education Committee and co-chair of the Joint Committee to develop a master plan for education. Ted Lempert, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I, I wear uh, many hats in addition to Peacemaker between uh, uh, Berkeley and Stanford. Um, and uh, before I launch in, and my hat as president of Children Now, I um, also serve on the County Board of Education. So I'm in this room a lot and just uh, love seeing the amazing work of Anne and, and her team. So just a shout out to the county office. And I'm, of course, a resident of San Mateo County. And you've heard the phrase, all politics is local. So where did I sit? Well, at the table with one where I grew up, San Mateo Foster City, Baywood and Burrell. And at the same table where we live now, or my kids at the school in San Carlos. In fact, my youngest is a uh, fifth grader at Central and all went through uh, White Oaks and, and, and Central, um, and where my wife is a school board member um, in, in San Carlos. Um, so uh, all, all uh, um, uh, very localized before I launch into a, a little bit more uh, state perspective. From the children now point of view, I just want to say one overall theme just to tie into what's been said before, before I, I, I launch into the local control funding. Uh, formula. What we try to do at Children Now is break down silos, both advocacy uh, and policy. And on the advocacy uh, side, it, it, it hurts when we've got so many different voices, foster care and children's health and early ed and child care, as opposed to all coming together and saying this is about kids. When it comes to policy, um, I, I'm an idealist, and, and by idealist is how would things work ideally? And how things would work ideally is if we sort of started from scratch, right? And rather than have this birth to five system and K-12 system, we'd really approach it the way uh, parents do, and certainly parents with resources do. And that is each and every year, how do I get the best support uh, for my child? And, and, and recognizing that the K-12 through system was sort of an artifact of, of the past when we didn't realize how critical uh, the birth to five years were for development. So at Children Now, our early learning and development team, our health team, and our K-12 team and child welfare team work together on a lot of issues, home visitation, developmental screening, school-based health, but particularly pertinent to today, uh, transitional kindergarten uh, uh, and um, the DRDPSR, an assessment that can link the two, the two worlds, and local control uh, funding formula. Because it's, it's absolutely imperative for all of us to try to figure out, and today is just so exciting to me, to see the two worlds really coming together and articulating so it's a seamless transition and not two different worlds that, that neither side understands. Um, so with, with that, I'm particularly excited to talk about something that um, uh, many of you might not have thought yet that much about, because I know there's a lot going on in education right now. Um, and look, control funding form, it's sort of like, now what is this all about? And so to even think about LCFF for ELD uh, is something I want you to think about, because that's the potential uh, to really help with this articulation uh, between the two systems. I'm going to... Um, go through this rapid fire for three reasons. Uh, some of you know this stuff better than I do. Uh, two, I only have a little bit of time. Um, and three, I'm happy to share this pre uh, presentation uh, with you. And then, as I'll say at the end, um, we're, we're planning to try to do some, some more of these types of presentations in, in San Mateo County uh, later on. So this is uh, the, the outline for what I'm going to rapid fire with uh, you today. So first of all, um, how we arrived at L L um, LCFF. Um, and really, it's an uh, example of, of breaking down silos. Um, Governor Brown provided some outstanding uh, leadership, but uh, what you need to know from a Sacramento perspective is this is the first time of 25 years of doing this um, where I've seen business and labor and education reform groups and parents groups and religious groups all coming together. And at, at Children Now, we played the, the, uh, the, the role where we were on the phone with the teachers union and then on the phone with ed reform and then on the phone with business. And all those groups came together with one voice to say, this is the, the right thing to do, which was really very, very uh, exciting and, and good portent for things to come. Well, what does LCFF mean for school funding? 
equity, uh, it's a huge infusion of dollars for uh, low-income English language learners and foster care kids, clarity, transparency. Uh, I, I'm not sure we're quite at, we know how schools are funded by the state, but we're, we're getting there with LCFF. Um, uh, breaking down the command and control. What many of you might not realize is California, until LCFF passed last year, was the most regulated school system in the country by far the most state capital dominated system. LCFF tries to break that apart and really bring the decision making back local. But what, when talking about national stats, as all of you know, we also rank near the bottom in school funding. And what LCFF did not do was address that. So overriding all of this is the fact that we still rank near the very bottom um, in, in funding and, and need to continue to, to fight to uh, increase that. Um, so um, the LCFF um, is transitioned. Uh, it, it tries to provide some sense of, of how dollars are, 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 are going to be rolled out between now and, and 2021. And, and you can all look at your district's uh, projections of how that's going to play out with, with the new budget forecast. And I'm going to race through this really quick. Uh, you can examine it more thoroughly later. But essentially, what the formula does is base funding for every student. Uh, there's a, to talk about K through three uh, because uh, class size reduction is no uh, longer the categorical more funding, though, for K through three to try to allow for those smaller class sizes. Um, and then uh, supplemental funding for uh, foster care, uh, low income English learners, and concentration. Uh, for areas with intense uh, uh, poverty to get uh, additional funding. Um, so uh, what does LCFF mean for um, accountability? And uh, if you haven't uh, heard uh, the acronym LCAP, um, I want you to all walk out going LCAP, 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 because that's the key um, to early learning in LCFF. It's essentially now each year, school districts are required to adopt um, with community input a, um, a local control and accountability plan, a, a local plan, uh, three years, but then updated that's going to be linked to, uh, to the budget. So what's exciting about this plan, and it, this is really uh, so fitting, it comes after the presentations you've heard, is that it has to address uh, these eight state priorities. And, and what will strike you from this list is that it's not just academic standards, although academic standards are obviously there, and, and you'll see that in number two. Um, but you, you'll see there's lots of other stuff like student engagement, school climate. Um, I'm particularly excited about um, number of, of five and six on there, not only because of the presentation we heard, but my colleague Brad Strong at, at Children Now got those into the law. And it's going to mean so much for, uh, for kids for, for generations to come, because now all districts are required to report um, on attendance and, and, and school climate uh, issues. So early learning and development, how does this all fit together? So I'm going to, I know folks come from uh, different areas and a lot of you are within the school district, but I actually think that's uh, the best way uh, to advocate. So just a few tips on how we can leverage this new law uh, for bringing more connection with early learning and some uh, more investment for early learning. So I'm going to go through uh, each of these tips. First, um, early learning being a strategic uh, to support for schools. So think about it. Each district has to meet the requirements, these eight requirements in the LCAP. Early learning provides an opportunity to help each district meet those uh, requirements, and especially uh, the four I'm highlighting. So as, as, as the district has to say, here's how we're addressing each of these, early learning can help, especially with these four. So how? Well, student achievement, uh, Anne and others already went through this, but it, it, it's absolutely clear that if districts are really going to be able to meet their student achievement requirements, you're not going to do that by starting a kindergarten. There, there, there needs to be that early l learning, and, and, and the research you've been hearing about uh, shows that. Too. So as part of that local plan to say, hey, we're going to meet this achievement goal by, by, in part, investing in early learning. And then um, student engagement and, and parental involvement, school climate, you know, the K through 12 system has so much, I would say, to learn from early learning. And that the parental engagement, social, emotional learning is, is part of that. So the building early learning into your local plans can help meet these state requirements. So that's one key part of the context. The next is um, understanding your district's financial situation. And I, I just need to stop for a, a minute here because um, it was very awkward 
working 24-7 to get LCFF passed in, in Sacramento when I live in San Mateo County, which is probably the most difficult county for this law. Why? Because we have districts in very different situations. We have some of the best funded districts, basic aid districts. We have other basic aid districts that actually um, got hurt by this law and there needs to be a fix uh, to, to adjust that. Um, and then we have districts like the one I'm in, San Carlos, uh, that has always been poorly funded and remains uh, poor, uh, poorly funded. So it, Sam, you, you need to understand your district's financial situation. We use this slide around the state, but especially in San Mateo County and an understanding that districts are, are, are funded very differently and even with LCFF, um, some of that disparity remains. That having been said, the good news is uh, Redwood City, Re Ravens, a number of districts really do see a significant boost from LCFF, which is, which is long overdue. And so then uh, building re relationships. Okay, so this is my challenge uh, to all of you. And, you know, there's gonna, uh, obviously a brief breakout session uh, late, uh, this morning, but then uh, continuing. Building relationships and partnerships with groups to, to really come together. So first of all, the excitement about LCFF is local planning, really bringing a range of folks together. Let me tell you what's going on in Los Angeles. As a San Mateo County resident, I'm always bragging about San Mateo County. I think this is the first time ever I've said, San Mateo County, you got to do, do better than what LA is doing. What's happening in LA is that, uh, and, and we've been providing a lot of support to them, but local early learning advocates, first five, the Chamber of Commerce, and other groups in Los Angeles are meeting on a regular basis with the school district officials to figure out how to use LCFF funding to expand early uh, learning. So we got a straight, a great start in Jefferson, but in, uh, how about in every single district in, in San Mateo County, we, we, work on, we work on that, that early learning folks, the business community, teachers and, and educators come together and say, hey, how can we include uh, early learning as, as part of, of our local plan? Um, so then, um, uh, lastly here is, uh, so what does that conversation look like? And, and this you all can say better than I, but basically look at the uh, local contacts. What's the supply of early learning programs in your community? What's the impact of, of these programs? Um, you can really look at the current assets that you have. Um, bullet number two is really key. Are there existing state and federal funds for ELD? There's a lot of exciting things going on, as Ann and others mentioned, big lift, legislation in, in Sacramento. Um, I am hoping all that happens and that investment comes, even if all that happens and all that investment uh, uh, comes, kids in need will still be getting a small fraction of what higher income parents in this county provide for their children birth to five. So when people say, well, what about all these other things? I say, bring it on. Um, because it, it, there was a RAND study that talks about how much middle income and high income families spend on their kids' birth to five in terms of quality child care, preschool, and it'll blow your mind. I, well, I think many of us know how, how much it costs. We're talking 25, 30,000 uh, a year. So, and kids in need need even more than that. So the short answer is we need to know the, what's going on outside, but we need to figure out ways to bring in more and more support uh, for early learning. Um, and then um, the multi-year plan, and I'll end, end with this piece. LCFF changes the culture by encouraging long-range planning and, and that local planning. And again, that fits into early learning um, because we have the chance um, to really develop a, 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 a local vision going forward for how we can better articulate early learning um, and, and, and K through 12. And you know, this gives you a few questions um, that can be addressed in, in each district's uh, uh, planning process. Um, and then the, uh, 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 the and then the, the key here um, is, you know, what strategic investments could be could be made, recognizing that some districts um, are just struggling with paying back uh, how they've been cut over the last four or five years, but others are in a little better position. But all districts should consider how could we uh, do some additional uh, investments or start some new investments uh, in early learning uh, uh, programs. And then the um, the really magical piece uh, of this, and this is what I want to leave you with and have you start thinking about, because part of the problem we've had in terms of building on this momentum for early learning uh, is, is the split between K-12 and, and birth to five, and the K-12 community says, of course we get the, the need for early learning, but it's, it's sort of a, yeah, of, of course, it's not documented. We don't have the K-12 community saying we absolutely have to have early learning, we can't meet our goals without it. 
Imagine if every single district in this state, as part of their LCAP, their, their local planning process, stated in there, we need to invest more in early learning for us to meet our goals. And some districts say we actually are, others we will say we don't have the funding to do what we'd like to do, but that's what we're hearing from our community. That documentation from the K-12 community throughout the state would build the, the support we need to, to really ultimately in, in invest. So that's something every district can do, and we're working with the, the state board right now to make sure that the, the, the planning documents, the guidance that comes out to districts says early learning is an allowable expense. So it'll be explicitly called out that that is something you can add in your local plan. So um, I know I've gone very quickly, um, but um, we uh, look, look forward to uh, providing you uh, more information um, and hope to be doing some uh, more on the ground work here. Um, as we're already doing in LA and open, it's a little shorter commute for me to do it uh, here. So we hope to be doing more work with you. And I provided some uh, 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 links that we send this out, some ways you can get more information on LCFF and then also the uh, ELD connection in, in addition to the names you see down there, we're bringing on a, a, a new staff member, uh, Eduardo Aguilar, who worked in the Sacramento School District, who's going to be leading our efforts on ELD and LCFF, so an opportunity to work with many of you. So that's it in a nutshell. Thank you. <laughs>